When Stability AI launched Stable Diffusion 3, they actually launched two separate models or API endpoints that you could connect to. The first one is obviously Stable Diffusion 3, which you use a text prompt and you generate an image with. The second one though is a little bit different, it's image to image. And that's what we're gonna dive into today. This didn't seem to get as much attention, obviously, even on the announcement page on the Stability website. You can just see Stable Diffusion 3, our most advanced image model yet, features the latest in text to image technology. And then down below, they talk about it a little more. You can get started with the API, and they have a couple of mentions of text to image and image to image. You can see here in the API docs, they've got this other section, image to image. So let's take a look at that specifically. And first, what exactly is image to image anyway? Normally the way stable diffusion works is you start with this completely static image that's been generated by some Gaussian noise, and you sort of steer that with your text prompt to create this image at the end. This is called conditioning. Now the difference between text to image, like I just described, and image to image is that with image to image, you have not only a text prompt that's applying that conditioning or steering, but you also have a source image, an input image. Now, as usual, the easiest way to understand this is to take a look at some actual examples. So let's generate a few images using this technique. The website we're gonna test this out on is pixeldojo.ai. This is actually my own project that I created. It allows you to come in here and play around with all the latest diffusion models, but you can also do some cool stuff like upscale and enhance photos. You can use consistent characters to create different poses for people in various situations, do things like style transfer, and of course, access Stable Diffusion 3 and Image to Image. Click on the Get Started tab, you can see all of those different features laid out in the main menu, and right now we're gonna focus on Image to Image. Now, you can take a look at this example here down at the bottom, and let's go ahead and actually recreate this. What we're gonna do is we're going to grab a file, so this is our source image that we're gonna start with, and we'll go ahead and grab the original image of that tortoise. We're gonna select Stable Diffusion 3 rather than Stable Diffusion 3 Turbo in the dropdown. Turbo is just a faster model. It uses fewer inference steps, but the quality isn't nearly as high as it is with Stable Diffusion 3. Now, we also have to add a text prompt, and for this one, you can see down in the example that the prompt is a tortoise holding bananas. So we'll go ahead and drop that in and we'll just click generate. This will take just a few seconds. Usually Stable Diffusion 3 is relatively quick at returning an image. I'm going to keep talking so you can see that it's already done. So now you have that source image you can see here on the left and then you've got the destination image or that fine-tuned image with the image to image over here on the right and you can see it's still a tortoise. It's got similar style to the original image and now he's holding bananas in his hands. Let's see if we can also remove things from the image. So now we'll say a tortoise without a shell. This could get a little bit weird, but let's find out what comes back from the model. I didn't seem to like to want to do that. You can see the source image still on the left, but the right, it's still just a tortoise. It doesn't look like he's missing a shell. This next image, I'm going to start out with this picture that's from another one of the examples on the website of this red-haired woman. We'll go ahead and select that. And then we'll say a red haired girl frowning. She's smiling in the photo, so I'm curious if it can actually take that person and take them from smiling to frowning. All right, so you can see that it sort of does it. She's frowning a little too hard there. Look at that furrow in that brow, that's crazy. But you can see that it does use the inference from the original image. You can see some of that carried over into the final image. As you can see, you're not gonna come back with the exact same image, but with a different pose or a different look. There are other models that are actually really good at that, which we'll talk about in a different video, but you can see that it does definitely influence the final image that's created. Let's try another example. So we're gonna take this image. This is actually similar to one of the images that was used in the press release videos or the press release documents for Stable Diffusion 3. It's this guy, he has sort of a television for a head and he's out in the desert. So I'm gonna say man with television for head surrounded by apples. Go. So you can see that source image and then finally he's sort of in this, it looks like there's a field behind him instead of the mountains. He's facing backwards which is interesting because the television if you think of it as his head would be kind of facing towards us now it's the other way. But he is surrounded by apples. They do look like they're somewhat gigantic apples but 
apples nonetheless. Now, can we take this same image and say something like, man with television for head holding a sign that says all your tech AI. Oh, interesting. So instead of him holding a sign, it's actually superimposed this onto his shirt. So it says all your tech AI. It's actually kind of awesome. Not exactly what we asked, so you don't get back that exact same prompt, but still pretty cool nonetheless. Let's add to that a little bit, shall we? Say, standing in the middle of a modern city. We'll see if it changes the background to match that styling, if it can understand that from the prompt. Okay, so now we've got this city behind him. He's standing on what appears to be sort of a brick road instead of that sand bed from the other one. And then he's got this other hand sort of growing out of the side of him, which is a little odd. But you can see it nails the text pretty much every time. Even in that last image, the text was coherent and it looked good. So uh, I don't know, a little weird, but you get it. Now what happens if we change something more fundamental about the image? So I'm going to say man with a pumpkin for a head instead of a television. See if it swaps that piece out for us. That came out awesome. So check that out. Not only does he have a sign, it looks like maybe hanging around his neck that says all your tech AI. Again, coherent, good text, but also he's got this amazing pumpkin head. He's standing in the middle of a city. This is really cool. So this is, I think, the future of image editing is being able to come in, take an image, and then use text prompts to sort of steer where that image goes. Now, obviously we're not quite there. You don't have that level of control that you really need as a creative artist, but you can still get back some really cool results with this, as you can see. All right, this next one, I'm gonna take an AI generated image of a steak dinner, and I'm gonna say a steak dinner covered with mushrooms. Now you'll see there aren't any mushrooms in the original image, so it should be a little bit interesting. Will it be growing mushrooms? Will it be mushrooms like you'd expect? It's mushrooms like you'd expect. That actually looks incredible. So if you look at the original image, it looked like scalloped potatoes. It has this, you know, nice sear on the meat, the sauce next to it on this sort of modern looking plate. You've got a glass of wine in the back and then some sort of other dish. Not quite sure what it is. In this, you get that same look, that same aesthetic. You've got the modern plate and everything else, but it looks naturally placed. This looks like it was in the original image. Really, really good quality here, I think, overall. Now, can we swap out the steak for a chicken? Can we go that far? Let's find out. Wow. Okay. So it's still, like I said, it kept that original look and feel, but man, look at that. You've got this like almost a whole roasted chicken. Now it does look like down here where you'd have the chicken drumsticks. There's like drumsticks made out of carrots. Kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> But overall, man, that looks really, really good. So not only can you sort of steer the images, but you can create something entirely new. It has that same look and feel, but completely different concept, completely different main elements. Now, how weird can we actually take this? I'm gonna say a delicious dinner of strawberries and cell phones. This should be interesting. Actually, it looks really, really good. I'd like to eat that. Um, I don't know what's around the strawberries, but you've got like sliced strawberries, you got some sort of crumble on top. Looks like maybe cheese or cream, then maybe some mint leaves. This looks really good. Drops of honey drizzled all over the place. Now, it ignored my cell phones once. So let's actually take out the strawberries and just say delicious dinner of cell phones. It really doesn't want to use phones in there. It's going to straight up say eating a phone. Let's see if we can get a phone in this picture. No, it just does not want to do it. Let's say a computer for dinner. I really want something inanimate, something that you wouldn't actually eat. Still didn't do it. It sort of put it inside of a container that maybe loosely looks like, I don't know, a laptop or something. Say a coffee mug for dinner. Still didn't do it. I mean, there's a coffee mug, but it's filled with espresso. It is cool how it's sort of like, it's, it's like if you go to a nice restaurant and you have a good meal and how they'll have the sauce sort of all over the plate. This is sort of like, the coffee mug is the main dish, and then you've got this sauce poured over the side. So I'd say that's probably as close as we're going to get. As you can see, you can have quite a bit of fun with Image to Image and Stable Diffusion 3, and it's really rock solid at text generation still, which cool to see that we're finally getting that way. And Stable Diffusion 3, Image to Image, and the regular model are only available via API from Stability AI. They charge you a minimum of $10 to buy 
API credits, and then you have to either use a comfy UI workflow or build out your own system. The alternative is to head on over to pixeldojo.ai. I've got it all hooked up. It's all set up. All you have to do is join, subscribe. It's $9.95 a month, and you can create images using Stable Diffusion 3, Stable Diffusion 3 image to image, and all of the other models and upscalers that are included as well. So go check it out. Let me know in the comments below what you think and if you're able to get Stable Diffusion 3 to generate an image that has something inanimate that you're eating, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town, breaking down AI, wearing the crown, from basics to complex, never let you down, all your tech AI, earning the renown.